Hi, everybody. I'm Kathy Cairo with Keller Williams Greater Columbus, and we're just really thrilled that you are taking a little bit of time on your Tuesday evening to um, uh, visit with us. Tonight's Transition Tuesday is uh, dealing with legal issues and the law as we retire and as you look to downsizing. We have some good guests tonight uh, with us. Uh, my, my first guest, who I'll introduce in just a moment, is Tim Jarvis with the Jarvis Law uh, Firm. He'll, he's going to be talking a little bit about elder law and what your consideration should be as you, um, as you make uh, plans in your retirement. We also have Scott Stevenson with us. He is with um, Northwest Title. He's going to be talking about the importance of title issues with your home, how to protect yourself, and what you should be looking at in terms of cyber fraud, things like that. And then for a personal element, I've invited a friend of mine, and uh, to be quite honest, a friend of quite a few of yours, uh, uh, Michelle Renda, and she owns the uh, Trading Places store in uh, Dublin, but she has a personal experience about the importance of having your legal affairs uh, in order. She went through the death of her husband this year, and she's going to talk to you a little bit about the good, the bad, and the ugly, um, the things she was glad she did, the things she wished she did, and kind of advise you so that you don't fall into some of the difficulties she had um, upon the uh, sudden death of her husband. And then, of course, we'll talk very briefly about home sales, what's going on in central Ohio. And all through the event tonight, we are taking your questions. What we're going to do in the interest of time so that uh, we don't uh, have this go on for two hours. We want to give you, um, all of our viewers an opportunity to hear the speakers. If you have a question, and, and uh, those of you who've done virtual seminars before are familiar with the chat feature. If you'll just look to your right, there is an opportunity for you to click and chat and ask a question. We have someone online tracking those questions. All of our presenters are going to stick around to the end and then we'll ask the questions and get them answered. So um, again, not ignoring you, but just put your questions in the chat box and we'll make sure that the uh, question goes to the appropriate person um, after all, all of our presenters are done. So thank you, thanks for your time tonight. We think we'll have you for about an hour and we hope you get lots of great information in tonight's seminar. Our first guest is Tim Jarvis with the Jarvis Law Firm. He specializes in elder law and in doing so has served uh, hundreds, if not thousands of Central Ohio homeowners and, um, and retirees looking to best plan and preserve, um, make sure their plans are carried out here in Central Ohio. So we're gonna welcome Tim Jarvis. He's gonna start with some tips to help you um, have your plans in place and, uh, and moving forward in this third chapter of life as best you can. Welcome, Tim. Great, thanks so much, Kathy. Appreciate everyone uh, joining us this evening. And as Kathy mentioned, um, I'm Tim Jarvis from Jarvis Law Office, and I'm gonna get my presentation started here. Uh, make sure you all can see it. Oop, that's not what I wanted. All right, so. Stephanie, uh, there we go. Uh, so on the screen, you should see, uh, it says, let's go on a road trip. And then to the right, it says elder law and estate planning road trip. Um, if you can't see that, if you type uh, something to that effect in the chat box and uh, my uh, associate, uh, Stephanie, who's joining us today, will will help uh, uh, try to help resolve any technical issues that, that you may be having. Uh, but um, short of that, we'll go ahead and get started. So I've been in practice now for coming up on 17 years. And being an attorney was not my original career choice. I, I like to tell people I was kind of drug kicking and screaming or screaming to, to law school. My original career, I was a financial advisor. I uh, really enjoyed doing that kind of work, you know, helping people with their investing and saving for retirement and what have you. Um, also a certified financial planner, was a licensed stockbroker. And what happened to change my, my career path, so to speak, is my grandmother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. I was very close with her. In fact, growing up as a kid, I would spend uh, summers with her. So 
very difficult situation to be involved with to, to kind of watch her slipping away before our very eyes. And when she received that diagnosis of the Alzheimer's, my family tapped me and said, all right, you're the financial guy. You need to figure out what we should be doing in the event that her Alzheimer's would get to the point where she needed nursing home care. Now, that was the last thing any of us wanted to see happen. But, you know, we were realistic and understood that with something like Alzheimer's, which is progressive, that more than likely there would come a time where she would need that type of care. So when my family told me that was my job to figure this out, you know, at the time I thought, sure, no problem. I'll do some research. I'll talk to the various professionals and we'll get this figured out pretty quickly. Well, that's not the way it turned out at all. Uh, it took me about two years to finally find the, the type of an attorney who could help with, with this kind of planning. Uh, it was one of the very first elder law attorneys. But until I found him, it was incredibly frustrating. I bet I sat down with at least half a dozen other attorneys before I, I found the, the right attorney. And they were all helpful, or they wanted to be helpful. Uh, they were friendly enough. But each one I sat down with would start our conversation by saying something like, well, this is not really the kind of work we do here. Not 100% sure how this whole thing works. Basically, they were admitting to me that they didn't know any more about it than I did. Um, now, that didn't stop them from sending me a bill in the mail for you know three to $500. Um, incredibly frustrating. Uh, in fact, I had all but given up. Finally, almost by luck, found one of the very first Elver Law attorneys. And he basically solved all of our, our concerns, our issues, uh, and put a plan in place that ultimately saved just about everything she had, despite the fact that she spent about 10 years in the nursing home. Uh, so going through that is what made me decide that I wanted to help other families who are going through the same sort of thing. Uh, so for today's presentation, we're going to be talking about the, the various vehicles, um, what they can do, what they can help you with, and what they can't help you with. Uh, so my paralegal was the one who put this presentation together, and she's uh, joining us today. She's on uh, uh, participating, and she made me promise that when I got to this slide, I would do my best Forrest Gump uh, impression. So here we go, and I can't make any promises. Uh, but the line she wanted to, me to say was, as mama always said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> so, Nicole, that one's for you. Uh, so you can see here on this slide the, the various images we have. But obviously, we, we have no idea, uh, no way of knowing ahead of time what kind of obstacles or challenges we're each going to face as we get older. And no, no surprise to anyone that Typically, we have more issues the older we get, health issues, which then lead to oftentimes legal issues, especially if someone needs long-term care of any sort. So we're going to be talking about, like I said, the various uh, vehicles, uh, what they can do and what they can't do. So we've got uh, four vehicles we're going to be talking about. Uh, we have one more, but in the interest of time, we decided to save it for uh, another presentation. So we're going to be talking about what the vehicles do and which one you might need, depending on where you're wanting to go, or depending on what obstacles you think might come in your uh, in, into your road down the road or in the future. So the first tool, it's really not a tool, but it's a plan that a lot of us have, and that's the no plan plan. Uh, this is where someone just doesn't get around to, to getting their plan in place. And I don't mean any judgment with this. Uh, this is one area that is incredibly easy just to put on the back burner and get to it you know, another time. The obvious problem is that you know, none of us are, are guaranteed a, a tomorrow. And if something comes up before we get around to doing our planning, um, that can make things a whole lot more difficult especially on the, the family that, that you leave behind. Uh, so the, the first plan, like I said, is uh, we're going to call it a backpack for this example. Um, basically, it's the no plan plan. And the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that if you don't have a plan, the state has one for you. Um, the laws dictate who gets what if you pass away without any sort of plan in place whatsoever. Um, now, the only benefit to this plan is it is the 
the cheapest plan because obviously you're you're not doing anything ahead of time. So it's the cheapest plan while you're alive. It's the most expensive plan after you pass away. Um, in fact, usually nothing even comes in at a close second. Uh, so I think we'd all agree that this this plan is not really a, a a viable option and probably not something we need to spend a, a lot more time talking about. So the, the next vehicle, uh, this is the bike-based plan. Uh, so this is a plan uh, where we have a will, a financial power of attorney, a healthcare power of attorney, uh, perhaps a living will and the HIPAA release. HIPAA is just the healthcare privacy rules. The HIPAA release just allows whoever you want to talk to your doctors whenever they think it, it's necessary or appropriate. So with this bike place, bike uh, based plan, you, you are providing some direction um, through the will. Now, the thing to remember is if the will controls who gets what after you're gone, that by definition, that is probate. Now, you've probably heard that you want to bypass this process like the plague. And I, I personally agree with that. Probate is incredibly time consuming and it's incredibly expensive. Uh, so to not put your family through that, bike-based plan is probably not the, the best option. Um, now, that being said, we do have some clients where the bike-based plan is really all they need, um, either because their, their estate is a little bit more modest or uh, maybe they're still really young, they don't have kids, uh, and they, they don't really need a lot of legal planning. Uh, but for most of us, especially if you don't want to leave a big mess behind that your family has to take care of after you're gone, um, the bike-based plan is probably not the, the best option. Um, the next option is a revocable living trust-based plan. And there are many, many different types of trusts. In, in my practice alone, we use at least half a dozen different types. Not going to go through every, every uh, single type that we use. Uh, get a little bit uh, tedious and, and probably not the most interesting conversation. Uh, so for today's presentation, I really just made this simple, broke it down into two, two basic types of trusts. This first one, we're uh, comparing it to a, a convertible. Uh, so this, again, is a revocable living trust-based plan. Now, this will allow you to bypass the probate process completely. Um, now, that's assuming that you, you set up the trust correctly. Um, it also allows you to maintain control over everything for as long as you're, you're able to do that. Uh, it'll provide protections for your beneficiaries, meaning after you pass away, or if you're married after you both pass away, and whatever you're able to leave to your, your beneficiaries, when they inherit that, it's set up in a way that no one can ever take that inheritance away from them. Uh, and this includes things like if you know, one of your beneficiaries gets a divorce after receiving the inheritance from you, or maybe they get into a car accident, it's their fault, they get sued, they lose that lawsuit, or maybe they get laid off, they can't keep up with their bills, so they have to file bankruptcy. If any of those things happen with a trust-based plan, we can make sure that no one can take the inheritance away from your, your beneficiaries. Now, I guess the point I need to make here is if you have this type of plan now, don't assume that that protection is already built into it. Uh, in most of the, the trust I review from other attorneys or other law firms, they don't have that protection built into them, which I think is kind of missing the whole point of doing this type of planning is to be able to protect your beneficiaries. Uh, so it, it will still allow you to bypass probate uh, and you're still in control over everything. but. Again, that protection isn't automatic, the protection for your beneficiaries. Uh, that has to be specifically built into the plan. Um, now, the, the last type of plan we're gonna talk about is uh, an asset protection trust, or we liken this to a, an armored car. Uh, this will also allow you to avoid probate completely. You still control everything. Uh, we can still build in those protections for your beneficiaries. So after you pass away and they inherit whatever you're able to leave them, no one can ever take that money away from them. Um, and with this plan, it'll also allow you to protect what you have from a, a future long-term care situation. Uh, so future nursing home expenses, as an example. Um, 
Now, with that particular issue with, with Medicaid, which is a program that would pay for someone's long-term care expenses, there is a look back period. So my point with this is, this is not something that you really should feel comfortable waiting until that problem pops up before you start addressing this. Uh, you get a much better end result if we can implement the, the appropriate planning ahead of time uh, before you or your spouse would ever need long-term care. Uh, and then we also include all the, you know, the, uh, the basics as well, the, the will, the power of attorney, the healthcare power of attorney, the living will, uh, so that you're covered uh, against all of these what ifs that, that could, uh, you could face these obstacles down the road. All right. So the, the other point I have to make is when we're planning for, for your future, we have to know where we're, where we're wanting to end up. Uh, you probably all remember Alice in Wonderland when Alice asks the, the Cheshire cat, you know, which, which direction she should take. And the cat asks her, well, where, where do you want to go? And she says, well, I don't really care. And the cat says, well, then it doesn't matter w which direction you go. And that, that's kind of um, appropriate for legal planning as well. You, you have to start with the destination in mind and be aware of all these obstacles that you could face down the road. Um, once we know where you're trying to go, we can tell you the best way to, to get there. Now, because we have a limited amount of time and, and we have more than one presenter, um, by design, this was meant to be kind of a short and sweet uh, presentation. So I'm gonna kind of cut to the chase with, with all of this. If you want more information, uh, we're scheduling our, our full presentation, uh, which typically lasts about an hour. Um, you can register for that, that presentation just by opening the chat box, um, and you can click, click on the link to um, schedule the or reserve your spot for the presentation. Or if you have a legal issue that you know you want to get resolved now, um, you can also click on the link in the chat box and you can schedule a consultation with my office. And as a thank you to, to Kathy for having us um, included in the call tonight, I'm gonna waive the, the normal consultation fee that we, we normally would charge. So it's not gonna cost you a dime. Um, and Kathy, I really appreciate uh, you having, having me and my firm on the, the call tonight. Uh, so as a thank you, uh, I'll waive the consultation fee for anyone who wants an appointment. But if you are not ready to make an appointment yet, if you just want uh, to schedule the, the next seminar, click on, the, click on the link in the chat box and you can do that. Um, and as Kathy said at the beginning, I'm also gonna stick around to the end. So if anyone has any questions for me, I'll be happy to answer them um, after all the other presenters ha have had a chance to, to speak. Thanks so much, Tim. And I, I will personally say that Tim's uh, firm did uh, my um, legal planning that was long overdue. I had a will, I had a power of attorney, I had a medical power of attorney, and I really thought, you know, that I was in pretty good shape. Uh, 10 years later, I um, thought, you know, life has changed a little bit, relationships have changed a little bit. And so I went in for that free consultation and really found, um, you know, I will say this, the attorney who did my original work was a friend of mine in the real estate world. And I think he did as well as he could do, given that he was primarily a real estate attorney. But boy, um, some of the questions that were asked, I'd never even thought of. And as Tim was referring to walking down that road, really made me stop and think, okay, what do I want? and what is in the best interest of my family or my business in the future and making sure that the decisions I make today were truly going to have the end result for what happened tomorrow. And so they were very patient um, and very thorough. And now I have a big thick book <laughs> that, uh, that so is somewhere buried in there are all my wishes and I'm very, very grateful for Tim's firm uh, for doing that. Um, uh, our next guest tonight, and I think this is sometimes we can look at the law and it's just kind of dry and out there and 
and something that we might think about tomorrow. But what our next guest tonight found is that sometimes there isn't a tomorrow. And I want to welcome Michelle Renda tonight. And I'm so grateful to Michelle to be willing to talk to you about what was a very difficult time in her life. So welcome, Michelle, to Transition Tuesdays. Thank you, um, Kathy. Why don't you tell me, let's go back a few months, and and I'm going to assume that be, be, uh, before this tragedy in your life, you sailed along like all of us, right? Just feeling like one day you would deal with these things. Um, yes, we did, and I was just kind of uh, listening to the roadmap, and um, I had my backpack on with the zero plan, <laughs> that's for sure, and uh just like as you introduced um, Tim coming through to the th chapter three of life, I will tell you that we were just entering chapter two. Um, you know, we'd been in our house for 20 years. Our kids were just getting into high school. One was getting in high school. One was getting ready to um, as a senior and getting ready for college. So, you know, we were pre empty nesters and that, that was our focus of how are we going to pay for a wedding and what are we going to do? That's, that, that's what our planning amounted to. And so, you know, what happened is we, we thought we were pretty, sitting pretty, pretty. We had homeowners insurance, we had health insurance, we had um, auto insurance, you know, and all those things that we had felt good about, oh, we're protected for mm -hmm. today. And what happened is, you know, a tragedy struck and the next thing unexpectedly and um, suddenly, and all of a sudden our today is now, our tomorrow is now today. Um, and all the security we thought we had built was for the current environment. It was not for the future and it was not for our chapter three and beyond. Um, and so it, it really, you know, it was eight months ago, I lost my husband and it brought a whole light on the fact that we had not put planning in place for the next next chapter of our lives so so michelle immediately and again i'm so sorry for the loss of your husband i know it's been a and then and then covid and then everything <laughs> your your business has been right year. it's been a rough year i know for you so you you wake up after the funeral everybody's gone home what was the first what began to happen just to tell you we were not legally prepared for this what did you begin to notice well the the first thing is um you know we, we had a business and it was a growing business so my husband was the primary uh, breadwinner winner in our family and you know when the dust settles and you wake up you're like oh my gosh wh where's the money <laughs> you know how are we gonna what are we gonna do and that panic kind of set in and so it was really kind of a um, uh, you know, picking through everything. And, and I can't stress enough um, to anyone, the first step of planning is just document every account that you have, every bank account, every, um, even as simple as uh, IDs for bank accounts or IDs for Amazon passwords, because you're turning off and on um, auto withdrawals and payments and things. You just, there's just so many things out there that you don't, know until it starts to happen and then the laundry list of things that you have to kind of dig through um you know starts starts showing up and and michelle what would be the response you would call a bank or you would call an account and say my husband died well what's the password i don't have the password so so what happens what happens when that happens yeah. well luckily you know if you have a social security number and you and your you know your husband or your spouse spouse well enough you kind of know what their passwords could be and and you know so there you, you start kind of you know shooting in the dark and guessing and then hope you get to that really nice representative that you know takes pity on your situation and you know really wants to help you through things and and luckily i did have a lot of that you know um it, it struggling to find things and dig through things um was difficult but um you know probably the most difficult was just what to do first and um, to make to get the ball rolling, you know, as far as even as much as, 
you know, social security, what does the government, you know, what, what can you do in that respect? Um, benefits from your husband. I had no idea about these kinds of things until um, actually, I think I was, uh, I was on one of Tim's webinars about wills and trusts. I would never have joined a will, <laughs> a webinar on planning at that stage and hit popped up on Facebook. And I'm like, I, I need to find out what to do. And so I just started looking for resources that could point me in that direction and kind of guide me through the next step. What do you wish, um, what do you wish you and your husband had in place? You know, I, I really wish that we had a, I'll call it a life continuity plan. <laughs> you know, the what happens, the if, what happens when, um, just kind of like our business continuity plan. What happens when COVID hits and you have to shut down your business? And, you know, we, we all had to learn a lot of things that way too. It's kind of that same thing. What do you do when something strikes your life and you have to shut it down? What are the steps that you need to bring it back? Um, I wish that we would have done the very basics. The I think Tim called it the the bicycle route. You know, having at least um, a will, um, the the power of attorney, um, the the very basics, the HIPAA. You know, those things at at the very least um, should be in everybody's you know filing cabinet. Um, uh, those things can always be revised, but um, that's really what I wish I had in place from the beginning to start the, the roadmap. What would you say to the people on tonight who are going to do this next week or the following week? It's always something that's, that's very easy to kick that can down the road. What would you say to them? Yeah, um, I would say, you know, sit down and have the conversation with your significant other. Um, it's a hard thing to talk about. You never want to have to think about that future could be today or tomorrow, but just start kind of thinking about what do you want for the future? What would happen if I was, what would happen if all of a sudden, you know, I suddenly passed away, you know, everybody kind of jokes about when I get hit by that bus and you never know, you never know what's going to happen. So start having those conversations and, um, you know, just get some documentation, get your files in place. So at least, you know, in one place that you can go to find paperwork, whether it's electronic or paper wise um, and figure out who your real points of contact are going to be, you know, at the very minimum, start there um, and then start building. But um, in the end, you know, it's great to have all these supplementary insurances, but you need to make sure that you have the right insurance, the right life insurance. I found out the very hard way that the life insurance that I thought we had was for accidental life insurance. And, you know, the way that my husband died was not, did not fall into that category. So it's null and void. I'm thinking, oh, at least we have this. And now, you know, we didn't even have the right insurance for how we were today. Um, so it's really important to know what are you paying for today in your insurances? Is it the right insurance? Is it going to cover for your stage of life now and the future? Um, and make those adjustments, beneficiaries and things like that. I mean, just the low hanging fruit, I would call it. Mm -hmm. Michelle, you are wonderful. And I, I'm going to ask you to stick on because we may have some of our viewers who have questions for you. But I am particularly grateful for you because um, it, it's one thing to hear an attorney say this. It's a whole nother thing to have someone who's walked through it and said, I, I wish I would have, I should have all of this and your courage and your willingness to talk about it is such a, a blessing to us. I will also tell you viewers that as a realtor, I often work with, um, spouse who, you know, uh, husbands or wives or partners who are all of the sudden left alone making um, some very difficult decisions. And I've seen both sides of it. I've seen a, a, a wife who cannot even sell her home because the paperwork was not correctly done um, and she's either not on the deed or not properly on the deed. I've seen husbands who um, uh, didn't have any, didn't know where to start, didn't know uh, you know, their their wife was the one who kept all the books and they're not sure of accounts. They don't know where things are. And in the midst of grief, that's just not the time to be trying to make these decisions. But I've also seen the other side of the coin. I've seen um, uh, families where it was done right and it was in place. And, and I will tell you that without reservation 
And without um, exception, I hear two things. Number one, it's the greatest gift they could have given us. They gave us an estate in order. They gave us their wishes in writing. They had every T crossed and every I dotted. And all we had to do was open up the plan and follow it and know that we were, uh, we were doing the right thing and not just for our future, but what our loved one would have wanted. That's like, we hear that. The other thing we hear is that we don't care what it costs <laughs> at this point, understanding that estate planning can be expensive. I've heard people say, you know, back then we thought it was expensive. Now it's priceless. Now, no matter <laughs> what it costs, uh, we know that if we did not have it in place, it would have cost us tens of thousands of dollars more. And that's coming from me, not the attorney, not the attorney as a realtor of saying, I've heard real life examples of people saying it is invaluable to have that in place. So Michelle, thank you for emphasizing um, that tonight. Welcome, um, thank you. Our next guest is a partner with the Kathy Cairo Group very often in our home sales. Um, you know, there's a, there is a, uh, an entity out there called a title company. And those of you, unless you've sold a home or sold a home recently, you kind of drive by the strip mall and never quite know what they do. <laughs> you don't know what they do. You know you sat there once when you bought or sold a house. Um, tonight, we're going to tell you what they do. We're going to tell you the importance of uh, title companies and the right title company in taking care of that one big investment you have, and that is your house. So we welcome tonight attorney and CEO of Northwest Title. Uh, Scott Stevenson. Scott, welcome. I think we, you need Oops. to un unmute there you. There, there we you go. go. Hi there. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me on tonight. Uh, it's, uh, it's an honor to be with you. Uh, thanks, Kathy, Michelle, Tim. Uh, thanks for all your kind words. I, I you know, and, and good words. I, uh, I've been an attorney now for 25 years, and my wife's also an attorney, and it took us a good 15 years till we sat down and finally met with a, a law firm to put together a trust for ourselves. It's one of those things we all think, oh yeah, I'll get to it here. Uh, but you're right, uh, the, the, it, critical. Um, uh, I'm the uh, owner, uh, CEO of Northwest Title, and uh, I've got a little presentation for you here today. Uh, but uh, as a title agent, uh, we handle the real estate closings, whether it's commercial or residential. Uh, and we bring everyone to the table, whether it's the realtors, their attorneys, uh, your information as buyer or seller, uh, put it all on all those legal documents and get it all recorded and then ensure uh, that sale. But as you can see by the slide I have up here for you today, we are under attack in the real estate industry. It's something you hear about all the time on the news with these cyber fraud and, and people having their wire transfers directed to the wrong place. Well, it's bad. It's really bad. And uh, not only do I want to share what's going on in the real estate industry, but I want to give you some tips on the way to protect yourself. It's called two-factor authentication. I'm going to ask you to turn it on on your email accounts tonight. I'm going to go through it and explain it to you. But it's a, a free and a easy way to protect yourself online, especially where you have your credit cards and those things securely, you know, you want to make sure it's as secure as possible. But let me show you what's going on in the real estate industry. We're absolutely under attack. And the question becomes, what's going on here? Uh, last year in my industry, we lost $221 million by sending wire transfers to the wrong place, being conned by these cyber fraudsters into sending money to the wrong place. The year before that, it was almost half of that, 150 million. Every year, it seems to double. And with COVID and everybody going to, to online use uh, for, for just about everything these days, it's even worse. It's probably going to be worse this year. Um, but why is it real estate? Well, I, you know, it's no longer the Targets or the LinkedIn's or the Yahoo's, if you've heard, all of those have been hacked. Um, now it's us. And it used to be they were coming after people like Kathy and her team, the realtors and the title agents like myself, trying to con us into sending uh, uh, money to the wrong place. But now they're going directly after our buyers and sellers. Uh, and I'll show you how they do that. Uh, it, also, we're sending money electronically, obviously, nowadays, all the time. It's easier for them. And worse yet, 
if you're selling your house, you want it to be online. You want it to be locatable. You want it on the Keller Williams website. You want it on the realtor.com website. You want it here and there. Well, in order to do that, you're easier to find for these criminals. And if they can find that you have a house listed, it might not say your name on that listing, but it's easy to go to the county auditor's website and just simply put in the property address and find out exactly who owns it. And once they have that, they're gonna look for you. And I'll show you how they go about doing that. Uh, what the big problem we're having, and the issue that I'm really talking about today is called by the FBI, business email compromise. There's a couple different things or different forms of it, but the one that we're seeing day in and day out in the real estate industry is called the man in the email scam. And the only thing these cyber fraudsters are trying to do is obtain your login and your password. That's all they want, folks. They're going to try to trick you into providing them with your login and password because the only thing they want to do is get into your inbox, your email account. So, for example, here's an older uh, uh, phishing email, and it looks like it's coming from Google. So I have a Gmail account, and if I got this email from a trusted third party, Google, it looks like it's coming from Google, uh, and it says, hey, somebody was trying to use the wrong password to get in your account. We prevented this from happening, this hijacker that was trying to get in there, but you need to go back into your account. Just click this nice little pretty easy to click blue button here to check the activity in your account. If you would have clicked that button without thinking about it, it would take you to a page that looked like you were logging into Gmail and you would put in your login and password and right there, you've just provided the criminal with access to your account. And think about that account, folks. Think about what's coming into your personal inbox. I know for me, it's family, it's friends, but worse yet, it's where I shop, it's where I bank, it's my medical information, it's my financial information, and you know, over 60% of us use the same password, the same login and password for almost every account that they have. And the reason is why? Well, because you have to have eight characters now and you have to use a symbol and it's so hard to remember. Well, folks, that's what the fraudster's counting on. If you're using the same login and password, what they're gonna do as soon as they get into your inbox is they're gonna try that login and password when they see that you go to Huntington to do your banking, when they see that you're uh, over there at Nordstrom's with a credit card statement, they're going to check and see if they can get into those accounts using that same login and password. That's what's going on, uh, and that's how they're doing it. In the real estate industry, it follows this chain here that I wanna explain to you. First is they profile you. Just like I said, they're gonna find you're selling your house, they look you up on the auditor's website, they find your name, now they're gonna go check on social media. If it was my house for sale, for example, and they go to check out my Facebook account, uh, they would see that I'm a huge Blue Jackets fan, the, the NHL team here in Columbus. And if they find that I'm a Blue Jackets fan, they're gonna send me the following email that says, Scott, hey, it's the Columbus Blue Jackets, thanks for being a great fan. We've got free tickets for the next time Nationwide Arena is open for the first game after COVID. Click here for your free tickets. If I get that email, I'm clicking on it. I'm providing my login and password. That's exactly what they're trying to do. They're phishing to get access to your accounts. And then they sit in there and monitor and wait. Uh, the average time that someone would sit, one of these fraudsters would sit in an email account is six months, six months where they're obtaining your information. And then in a real estate setting, they start impersonating the people that are involved in the transaction, the people that you trust. I'll give you an example of that here in just a second. And then once the closing is about to happen, when they know that wire money is going to be taking place to, to get to the title company to close on that transaction, that's when they get in place and provide the wrong email. Um, here is, uh, it, the worst part about the real estate transaction is, is that really it only takes one of us to let them in and they can see everyone involved. If they were to get into a real estate agent's account or even a buyer's account, uh, you know, they, all of a sudden they can see the realtor corresponding. They can see the title agency corresponding with them saying, hey, we need this information to get you ready for your transaction. So let me show you an example of what happened to one of our buyers in January of this year in our Dublin Ohio office here of Northwest Title, Northwest Select Title Agency. So this email 
went to a buyer um, and they were about a week before the closing took place. So a week before the buyer would have to wire their funds. And it says, hello, you need, to, you need to have cash to close funds wired to our trust account today to avoid closing delays so that our funds can clear the account and you're closing. Uh, I will send you wire instructions once you have acknowledged receipt of this email. I'll be busy with limited access to my phone, so don't bother calling me, uh, but you can send me an email if you need anything else. This is from a criminal that in this case we determined had gotten into the buyer's real estate agent's email account. And from there, they were watching as this transaction was about to happen. But then they impersonated one of my staff one of the first people to actually contact the buyer in this case to grab some information about their closing. And it was Taja and I've highlighted her, her signature box. And that's what the criminal did is they, they were monitoring this email account, copied and pasted Taja's signature block here into this email. But notice that in the signature block, it shows exactly that this Taja at nwtitle.com. You can see her real phone number there on Blazer Parkway and her email address in that highlighted signature block. But look at, at the top here. The emails actually, even though it says it's coming from Taja, it's actually from someone who opened a free account at Gmail and called themselves title.closingescrow0 at gmail.com. So this is how they're impersonating and trying to get a buyer or even a seller to transfer funds uh, as they've been monitoring that account. Don't worry, I'm gonna provide you with how you protect yourself from this. Uh, there are many other examples. I don't want it for the, the, the amount of time that I have here, I wanna get to some things here to really help you uh, protect yourself when you're online, especially as the holidays are coming up uh, and all the shopping that we do online these days. Uh, you know, the key is passwords. Obviously that's one step, but I've got a better answer too. But just like my mom used to tell me, passwords are like underwear. Uh, keep them, excuse me, change them often, keep them private and never share them with anyone. Good stuff there. Uh, but take a look, everybody, if you're using a password that is in this list of the 50 most used passwords, a hacker could break that password in literally seconds. These passwords are the top 50 every single year. They never change. You need nine characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is my password. A lot of these on here that are, uh, are, are easy to read, many of them are, are cuss words. If you're using a cuss word, absolutely not. Also, if you're using a, a name, maybe it's your grandson. Uh, maybe it's, uh, it's your daughter. Uh, you know, I know that, that my mom uses uh, my, my nephew's name all the time, and I, I taught her this uh, many years ago. You can't. You can't have that be your password. Matter of fact, take a look at this. Uh, right now, if you're using six characters as a password, just six digits, and they're all lowercase, under today's, today's technology, they can break that in 10 minutes. Add an uppercase, 10 hours. Even if you add a number or a symbol that you can't remember, uh, it's only 18 days to break through a six digit. But why has your bank required you to go to eight characters with a with an uppercase, lowercase, and also a number or symbol, because look at that, eight characters with all those things, 463 years. And that's really where we need to be with our passwords. If you really wanna scare yourself, and I actually, I, I ask you that you jot this down, haveibeenpawned.com. Uh, this is actually a database, this is legitimate. It's a database of every hack that has taken place. So we're talking about the targets and the LinkedIn's and the Yahoo's. This database contains every single email address that was exposed in those attacks over the last 10 years. So if you insert your email on this website and say, you know, check for me and let me show you what I did. I put in my email. This is my personal, you know, junk email account that I use when I'm shopping and things. NWTitleScott at gmail.com. And sure enough, it says, oh no, you've been pawned or owned uh, with the misspelling. And sure enough, the one thing that had popped up was LinkedIn. LinkedIn in May of 2016 had 164 million emails and passwords exposed. I knew already that I had, I had changed my password since 2016, many people do not. Uh, that's it's out there everybody. But what did I do when I found this out on have I been pawn.com? I immediately changed my password uh, and and moved on uh, But again, take a look at this website everybody 
uh, have I been pawn.com, bring that up at the old Thanksgiving dinner table and scare uh, everyone in the family. Uh, but it's out there, it's not good news. Uh, but how do you really protect yourself, folks? Here it is. This is the most important thing I tell uh, people. I scream it from the mountaintops everywhere I go. It's my public service announcement and it's two-step verification. Sometimes they call it two-factor authentication. And you've done this before. If you've ever logged into your bank account, you have to do two things, right? The first step, step one, is just providing the things that you have to remember, your login and your password, right? But once you get into the, the bank account then, then it says, hey, we need to send you those digits that you need to put in. You have to do another step. You can either answer those security questions that you filled out years ago and you can't remember who your first grade teacher was um, or you know your, whatever middle name or wherever you were married, or they will text you uh, for the second step an actual digits. That's what we're talking about here. That is the two-step verification. The thing is that it's everywhere. That protection is everywhere on the internet. It's in your Netflix account. It's in your, your Yahoo. It's in Facebook, Instagram. If you're finding that you or friends of yours are constantly being hacked on Facebook, are you getting those weird messages from friends that are all of a sudden like, who is this that's talking to me? Uh, it's because they haven't turned on two-step verification or authentication. So for example, this is my Gmail account. I just wanna show you what you're looking for. Uh, it's easy to find where this two-factor authentication is turned on. It's usually, it's always gonna be in your security or your settings. So here I've got it circled. That I'm gonna to go to my security settings. I'm gonna click on that security box. And as soon as I do, it's gonna bring up this area where you can change your password. And sure enough, right underneath it there, uh, circled in red is the two-step verification. Uh, and you can see that I've, I already have that on, but when you do turn it on, uh, it'll say, hey, uh, where do you want me to send that text or email? Do you want to send it to my cell phone? And I, you can see I have my cell phone and then my office phone is my backup there. So what happens here, not like at your bank where you have to do this two-step dance every time you log into your bank account. In most of these accounts, it's once and done. And what you're doing when you turn on two-step is you're saying, I'm gonna authorize which devices are allowed to connect to this account. So if I get on my, uh, if I turn this on on my Gmail account and I go to my cell phone, it's gonna say, hey, wait a minute, you turned on when I log into Gmail, it's gonna say you, you, you turned on two-step, now we're gonna send you a code, you put in the code, I just authorized this device to, to connect to the account. Then the next step would be, I'm now at home and I have a, an iPad that I use at home. You know, I'm gonna have to then do another verification code to my phone to turn that device on. So again, it does take some time, but it's once and done. And folks, you gotta do it. You just have to. It's free, it's easy. It just takes a little work. If you're not sure where to go, please Google it. It should be the first thing pop up, you know, two-factor authentication, Apple, two-factor authentication, Yahoo. Um, the other thing is think about your important accounts. A lot of people are like, Scott, I, what is an important account that I have online? Well, anything that has your credit card, that's the first step. So first turn it on for your email account. That is a must do thing tonight. The second is to go through and say, wait a minute, I've got my credit card at Amazon. I've got my credit card at Netflix. I've got a lot of information in my Facebook account or other social media, Uber. You have to turn this on everywhere because folks, if somebody really did have your login and password, they would still then need your cell phone to get the text message to be able to log in from a, a computer somewhere halfway around the world. Again, I know it's a lot there, but it's necessary. The only way to protect yourself while online is using this service that was created by the federal government. It was something that happened with the FBI to have this two-factor two authentication. It's been around forever. It is truly the only way to protect yourself online. And especially if you're in a real estate transaction, I, I'm, I'm telling everyone, please turn it on just so we know no one else is in that account watching uh, this transaction move forward. I hope that was helpful, everybody, uh, and I look forward to your questions. But again, if I can assist you at Northwest Title, let me know.
or uh, if you need any help with uh, with cyber fraud, uh, let me know. Scott, thank you so much. That was excellent. I'm texting some of my colleagues while we're listening, saying that is incredible information. And I uh, and I hope uh, those of you who are online tonight are taking notes and and ready as soon as we get off tonight to. Uh, Go and start protecting your accounts, protecting yourself. So, Scott, we always appreciate you. Um, I want to take a moment and invite all of you who are on tonight. Again, what you've seen tonight um, are quality partners. They're some of the best in central Ohio. And the Kathy Cairo Group, as a real estate company, is, um, is thrilled to have these people as partners that we work with. Uh, we like to offer um, excellence in our real estate service, and we do so by partnering, partnering with really the best in Central Ohio, um, and so that's what that's what you get when uh, you hire us for real estate. What I'd like to offer tonight um, is if you are on tonight and a move is in your future, whether it be next spring, next year, whenever, uh, myself or one of my team would love to come walk through your home uh, and give you a quick market analysis. We are still in an incredibly good market here in Central Ohio. Um, we haven't done our end of year statistics yet, but I don't believe that COVID slowed us down at all as a team. I'm, I'm certain that it did not slow down home sales in Central Ohio. Uh, I get the question all the time. People say to me, Kathy, what about 2021? What do you think is going to happen? Well, who would have guessed COVID happened this year? So a lot of it is crystal ball thinking. Um, we have an election coming up. We have the after effects of COVID. We have some questions in our economy. So to that degree, um, when we talk about home sales, all of, all of the above affects us. But I will tell you this, there's two things that we have here in Central Ohio that until they change, still is a pretty good predictor of where our home sales are going to go. And number one is interest rates. Our interest rates are below 3%. It is almost free money. So what that means if you're a homeowner is that your buyer who is coming out of the woodwork to buy homes can literally buy twice as much home as they could seven or eight years ago. And so they're using that buying power. They're saying, we want a house while the money, the loan is this uh, inexpensive. The other thing that combines with that, which uh, makes the uh, home sale market what I call a hyper seller's market, is that um, we don't have enough homes on the market. It's supply and demand. Do you guys remember a few months ago when everybody rushed out to get toilet paper? And uh, all of a sudden, the shelves were empty and people were lined up to, to buy it. Well, you know what? Your house is toilet paper. <laughs> it's, in this market, there's simply not enough on the shelf. And uh, in a normal, typical market where we have even supply and demand, we should have 15,000 homes on the market. We have rarely had over 5,000 homes on the market since 2013. And as of this morning, we had less than 3,000 homes on the market. So you <clears throat> combine those two factors, low interest rates, which have buyers rushing out to buy homes, and no homes on the market, and you get what I just experienced this weekend with uh, homeowners. We put their home on the market on Thursday, and yesterday afternoon, we set to go over 10 offers with them. And they ultimately got 15,000 over list price. They were allowed to stay in their home for 60 days until their new home is being built. Um, you've heard me use the example, if, all, if this were a poker game, all the chips are on their side. So those two things, interest rates and no homes on the market. If that does not change going into spring 2021, then we are very likely in central Ohio to go right back into a hyper seller's market I do not know moving further into the year. We do, There's a lot of variables in play and we don't know. What I tell homeowners is, if you have no reason to sell, don't sell. But if you are thinking that in the next two years, you're going to have to sell either because of retirement, uh, because your kids are gone, because a wedding is out of the way, then you should really think hard about doing it while all those poker chips are on your side of the table. And if that is of interest to you, I would love to visit with you. I'd love to come out to your home, I'll walk through the home with you, give you an assessment of value, 
We can generally tell you how long your neighborhood takes to sell, talk to you about where you're going. And really, just, just as you put a legal plan in place, you begin putting a residential sale plan in place. Our visit is free and with no obligation. We'd love to meet you in person, and I'd love to visit you in your home. So if that interests you, just go to the link in your chat box, click on it, and come visit us. Our website is ourohiohome.com, ourohiohome.com. Click on the sellers, and there'll be a contact sheet there. Fill out, and Brandon, who is our customer care coordinator, will follow up with you and, uh, and set that up. Um, before I take the rest of your questions, I want to take a moment also and make it a resource available to you. I used my COVID downtime that I had to put together a book that has long been in my head. I've often said that uh, one of the biggest hindrances to selling houses in Central Ohio is just too much stuff. I can't sell your house if we can't clear it of stuff. So in the past three months, I put this book together. Take a look at it. Then we'll come back and we'll hear your questions. Got too much stuff? Of course you do. Downsizing expert Kathy Cairo brings you Got Stuff? Get Help. The complete guide to the who to, where to, and how to of getting rid of stuff. This easy to use reference book features over 100 pages of Columbus based businesses and nonprofit organizations. Sell it, donate it, toss it, organize it. It's all here. New York Times best-selling author Peter Walsh offers his decluttering tips, and Kathy shares her insights from years of helping homeowners just like you. Read the stories of local business owners, find value in the things you were going to throw away, and be encouraged to start your own journey to a simpler life. Get your copy today. Got stuff? Get help. The book is $30 plus tax and shipping. Order your copy today at DownsizeColumbus.com. Look for the Got Stuff? Get Help link. I'd love to get a copy. We, we, I'm really excited about the response. I've had people uh, buying it and calling me up and saying this is so helpful. Even in the age of the Internet where you think everything's at your hand, you still stop and say, do we know anybody who takes trumpets <laughs> or, or old school desks or whatever? And so what we've tried to do is put together a book that takes the stuff you don't want and puts it to great use. So go online if you'd like a copy of that. Now, all of our presenters are still here. Um, if you have any questions, uh, now, now's the time to put them in the chat box. And Scott, I'll start with a question to you. Um, I just had this asked of me by one of my clients last year, I mean, last week, and I didn't know the answer. I've heard that commercial about a company called Title Lock that apparently keeps criminals from stealing the title on your home. Have you heard of that? I mean, I yeah. or I didn't hear that that was a rampant crime going on, but apparently mm -hmm. they're asking you to uh, sign up for some service that will protect the title on your home. Is that necessary? I, I, if, if you're on Facebook, I'm usually the guy on there saying, this is a sham. This is a scam. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, I, uh, I even, uh, taped their, they have a 30 minute, uh, you know, commercial on TV, uh, that I taped the other night and it still didn't say anything, uh, that really does what they, they do. And it's hundreds of dollars, uh, a year. Uh, it, they claim that they're going to be, I, I assume, going to the county auditor's office to make sure that your property is still in your name. And if it isn't, then they notify you. It doesn't tell you what are they going to do to help you. It just says they're going to notify you. It's like, well, shoot, I can give you a link to the auditor's website and you can go on there and check yourself. But to yeah. answer your question, um, it's, a, it's a scam. Um, it, but uh, the real thing here is I heard of this once. In the, in the states that I currently practice in for the last 25 years. It happened during the downturn. It was Gross Point, Michigan, and there was a home up there. Uh, it was a snowbird. So it was a, a, a couple that had lived in Florida for at least six to eight months out of the year and then would return to Michigan during the, the summer and fall. Um, and supposedly, uh, they deeded the property to someone else, uh, did a closing and sold the house. 
I heard of that one time in 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not heard of anything since then. I haven't heard of anything in Ohio. Uh, you know, we've got 150 people all throughout the state of Ohio and, and our industry is on top of things like this. And, and we haven't talked about it at all uh, since 2010. So I, I was shocked to see it come back, that it's some sort of fear mongering to get people to spend hundreds of I dollars. Just, I told my clients, I said, look, I, I, I'm not an attorney. I don't work in the title industry, but I'm close enough to good title people that I think that some warning would have been gone out if this was some rampant thing going on that, you know, houses were being stolen and sold and all, all sorts of things. So, so those of you who are on another thing, you, because now the commercials are everywhere. You can yeah. hardly turn on AM radio and not hear a commercial for title lock. So you've heard it. And that was my inclination anyway, that it was not the crime of the century that we have, um, uh, been told that it is. Yeah. I, I would uh, recommend LifeLock, the you know the cyber type insurance. That's only a hundred dollars. Uh, before I'd ever uh, suggest anything like that. Uh, your title is fine, and this is not a rampant situation of phony documents being recorded. Or we do a better job than that in our industry to to know when there's a scam. Um, Wayne is asking a question, and he says, Scott, what do you think of a password manager? Ah. or services like uh, like uh, one password. Yes, uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend, and I took it out of my presentation to make sure it wasn't too long, uh, a password manager. Matter of fact, uh, we use at Northwest Title, and I've given it to all of my employees. I mean, I'm that into it. Uh, it's called LifeLock. Excuse me, she was LastPass. I'm on the last subject. LastPass.com. Uh, do take a look at it. Uh, the situation with a password manager is you only need to know one password, only one, and that gets you into your password manager. And from there, uh, it, I have all of my uh, passwords. I don't know any of my passwords. Don't even have to remember them. They're crazy lengths. They've got all these symbols and things in them because I don't need to. And I have LastPass on my phone. It's an app. It's on my computer. It's everywhere I need it to be. So you want to take a look at lastpass.com. They've got videos on how it works. You are gonna want uh, LastPass Premium so you can have it on multiple devices like your phone and laptops and those things. Uh, it, it's, if you get frustrated by remembering passwords, it's the best thing. And, and another thing that was a really nice selling point for me is that my wife has the ability, if anything were to happen to me, to get access to it. So there is a way, even from what Michelle was talking about earlier, uh, to, to allow for one individual or others to have that ability to get in there. So um, there, is, there is some other benefits, uh, uh, especially with the amount of passwords that we all need nowadays. So last pass. Okay, thank you. Well, I think that's it for questions. Just a couple reminders to those of you. First of all, thank you so much for being on um, on our uh, webinar tonight. Uh, Mary, if you're somewhere here, type it in if you're not online, Mary. Our next, our next uh, Transition Tuesday seminar, if you'll type it in here and tell us when and where it is so that we can make sure we invite you to that. I uh, wanna thank Tim Jarvis and the Jarvis team. Again, if you want to uh, come to one of the um, seminars that Tim does, there is a link here. Look under the name Stephanie Pillai there. There's a link you can um, register. Um, our thanks to Scott Stevenson and Northwest Title. If you partner with the Kathy Cairo Group, you will be partnering with um, Northwest Title. We do many, many of our closings there. Uh, Mary tells us our next transition uh, Tuesday is October the 20th at 630. And Mary, tell me what, what that one is. We'll, I'll, I'll get to, to it here. Stephanie just put in the chat box again, link to their um, next webinar. And then, um, uh, so sign up for that if you want to. And again, if you want someone, myself or someone from the Kathy Cairo Group to do a walkthrough of your home, uh, uh, click on um, Downsize Columbus and then go to our Transition Tuesdays page. That's our uh, a calendar. If you want me to come to your home, go to ourohiohome.com and uh, click on seller. There'll be a contact place to contact us. So 
Um, oh, someone has a question. What is my home worth and what can I do to make it worth more? Well, the first thing I would do is have me come out because I don't want you to spend money you don't need to spend. I went out to some guy's house the other night and he was painting his garage floor. And I was saying, you know, we're not in a market that you need to paint your garage floor. Um, we're not in a market you need to spend money unnecessarily. But there are some things you can do that are well worth uh, um, uh, doing so that you get your value back. So that's kind of a broad question without knowing your home. Not sure what you could do to make it worth more. But that's, again, one of the reasons we come into your home so we can give you what the value is and we're going into the winter months. You don't want to sell till next year. Give you a few months to do some of these improvements and get um, even more value. Next Transition Tuesday, we're going to be talking about that. It's what is my home worth and how can I make it worth more? We'll go into more detail. We'll talk about some of the improvements you can do. We'll talk about specific neighborhoods, specific areas of town. So if you have not yet registered, go to downsizecolumbus.com. Go to our Transition Tuesdays link and sign up. And it'll be much like tonight. We'll have some great information for you. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, um, uh, all of you, for being here tonight. The Jarvis team. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, Scott. And thank you, all of you, who have given us an hour of your time tonight. We appreciate, appreciate you very much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm.